Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sunny Lanka, and I'm one of the co-chairs of CNTA's Young Professionals Committee. Um, and today I'll be kind of hosting and um, helping out the Q&A for this Tap into Nuclear session. So as you all know, today we're going to be talking about navigating career changes during COVID-19. Um, I know personally I've talked to a couple friends who were starting to look for a job maybe at the beginning of the pandemic and then put it off because they thought, you know, I'm just going to wait until this whole thing blows over and now it's going longer and longer. So we really wanted to um, get some great panelists together today to give a couple perspectives. Um, one on making that transition to a new job during this time, two on how you actually find those positions and maybe how to network during kind of a non-traditional time. And then also uh, from the manager's perspective, how to manage or onboard new employees. Um, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually first, before I introduce the panelists, let me just talk a little bit about how to ask questions. I'm gonna hand it over to Allison. Um, it looks like we only have a couple of panelists and only eight attendees. So feel free to jump in at any time. We'll do a set Q&A session at the end, but along the way, feel free to ask questions. This is very informal. So there are three real ways for attendees to ask questions. Um, the easiest way is if you have look in the chat function, you can send it to all panelists and attendees, and that way everyone will see it. Um, you can also ask a Q&A in the Q&A section itself, or you can virtually raise your hand and that will allow, um, Sunny's gonna control it and when she sees a hand raised, she'll allow you to talk so you'll then be unmuted. Right now, if you're not one of the five that shows up on the screen, you are muted and video is off for you. So you don't have to worry about your background. So those are the three major ways. There are also gonna be little um, polls that pop up. They're gonna stay up for about a minute just to gauge some interest while we go through all of this. Okay, perfect. So we'll, um, we'll do introductions of the panelists first. So I'll start, so I'm gonna be one of the panelists today. Um, I actually just transitioned uh, jobs on site and moved over from SRNS to Parsons at the Salt Waste Processing Facility. So started there in mid-September. Um, total, I've been on site about four and a half years now. Um, Marissa, I'll go to you since I'm just, I'm just gonna do it in order of how I see you guys. All right, sounds good. So my name is Marissa Regal and I am a group manager in Savannah River National Laboratory. Um, I manage a group of people right now, 18. I just onboarded somebody, so it's perfect timing mm -hmm. of this. We're in the process of it. So um, I've been on site for about 11 years, started off as a researcher, and then I've been a manager for about three years now. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jen, we'll go to you next. Hey, I am Jennifer Abraham. I've been on site since 2015. I am a senior integration specialist. Um, and that's about it. Okay, and you just moved jobs internally, externally? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just moved jobs internally um, in September. So I'll be speaking a little bit about my experience when we start talking about it. Perfect, thanks. And then I'll hand it over to you to introduce yourself and then um, just to move into some of your talking points. Sure, my name is Chris Bethman. I lead the HR team at the SRNL and I've been on site for two years. So um, I have a little bit of a, a new perspective on uh, finding a job, but it's not during the pandemic. So <clears throat> Aiken is home for me. So I was in uh, Baton Rouge just prior to uh, my coming here. So but I've spent plenty of years on site. I was, I was uh, in operations back in the 80s here to the 90s. And then I uh, left for about five years and then went to the MOX project. So I've spent a lot of time out here. So, so I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to the, the group here today. We, we HR, we like to have some face time with some people. So being cooped up at home is, is not exactly my idea of, uh, of how I like to be an HR person. So, uh, but it's good to interact with, with folks uh, online here. So I'll take the opportunity at this point to kind of jump in a little bit and, and kind of identify a couple of key points that I think were, are key to anyone looking for uh, a new job, whether you're on site internally or externally or whatever. So the first thing I would uh, encourage people to do is not to allow the separation 
to be used as an excuse as to why you didn't consider it, why you weren't considered for a job or why you didn't apply for a position. Making yourself available to those seeking new personnel is, is key. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. And we'll talk about some of them. From an internal and external uh, standpoint, I uh, would encourage everybody to understand the platform that you're looking at this meeting tonight. Um, I, I certainly had to educate myself on, um, I'm a little techno technologically tech challenged, so it's a little bit difficult and understanding these various platforms to be able to uh, have these types of meetings and, and interact with people. So, so that's kind of a learning curve that I've gotten better at over the course of time. But it's important that you learn how to do stuff like that so that you can uh, reach out during times like this when we're when we're doing every, everything mostly virtually. Uh, additionally, from an internal or external standpoint, be proactive in making keeping your key contacts with individuals that uh, you feel like you're going to need to engage with. Um, networking and um, staying in contact with with folks that that you know you may want to look to call on to later on uh, and and if if you don't if you don't maintain those contacts <clears throat> you know 90 percent of them may not produce anything but it's the one percent to ten percent that may end up putting you in a situation to make you aware of something uh, down the road internally on site uh, I'll go back to networking, as I said a minute ago. Uh, the employee resource groups that we have on site, uh, as far as AMP and Lyft, those, those types of groups that you can get involved with and maintain contact with and, and learn from others is a great way to remain networking and, and uh, learn about new opportunities and do whatever. And it also allows you to you know, reconnect with some former mentors that you might have had, uh, colleagues that have moved around the site, uh, encourage you to do that. Uh, as far as where to go to, to find these new opportunities, if you're on site, obviously most of us know about the internal postings on site, but I encourage everybody to uh, remain active on indeed.com and other sites like that to uh, identify opportunities. <clears throat> Even though I'm not necessarily looking, I always like to uh, assign myself an opportunity to get notified when new opportunities come up for whether it be the laboratory or on site. Uh, it's, it's always a good thing to have see you pop up in your email and if you don't see anything that uh, is of interest then you just click it off. So I encourage everybody to continue to do that. And since we're on our computer most of the time, it's, it's an opportunity to, um, to view that, <clears throat> to view that as a, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, an opportunity to use that uh, facet of, of making contact with people. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, it's also important, I think, if you keep if you know anybody in the organizations that you're interested in <clears throat> joining or you think you might be interested, the type of work that an organization does, reach out to somebody in there and let them, you know, find out what it's like to work in that department. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just another avenue to, to um, learn about if there's an opportunity available, learn about how it is to work there. You may not like it, so. Uh, the, the final couple of points that I'll make relative to that would be you need to make sure you update your profiles on your LinkedIn, your Glassdoor, or any other social media or professional site that you're looking in. If, if, if you're not in a, when you're not in a job hunting mode, mode, don't allow your profile to look like you are. But if you are, there's some key things that you can do to your LinkedIn profile that make it a little bit easier for people to find you. So I would encourage you to, to do that. I have a uh, document that I'll, I'll send to Sonny or, or uh, anyone if you guys would be interested in getting it. It's from LinkedIn on how to create a profile 
by using word clouds and a word cloud app that is out there. And in order to make yourself uh, more exposed to uh, some employers that might be looking for people. So uh, if, if anybody has an interest in learning about that, don't, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to Sonny and I'll get this document over to her so that uh, you can have that. The other thing I would say is externally, if you're looking for a job, you need to be prepared to go for a job that uh, might, you might not be able to go visit the site personally. So we've been since March, we have not had any in-person interviews. So a lot of people have declined us. I won't say a lot of people, a couple of people have declined us because they didn't have an opportunity to come to the site and see the lay of the land and everything else. You know, when you got to travel four or 500 miles to go to a new job, it's unprecedented that we might um, have an opportunity to to not go, go to the site and see who we're talking to. Uh, I know we see them virtually on the, on the computer screen, but it's not, um, it, I, I can't imagine ever accepting a job without actually going and visiting the site and sitting down face to face with my manager. So uh, that's something new that people are gonna have to grasp and, and, and they gotta be a trust factor and you gotta have a feel for what you're getting into. So, um, you know, so that's about it. I mean, I, I just tried to hit some high points. I know that's not every way uh, that we can get involved and, and uh, learn about opportunities, but uh, I hope that uh, gave everybody a, a couple of ideas on on what to do and especially how to stay in touch with people during this pandemic. Definitely, yeah. Thank you, Greg, for that LinkedIn profile tips. Um, you can probably send that out through CNTA along with the, the link to this the recording of this session. So that'll be great. Um, also, just to piggyback off one thing Chris said, uh, when it comes to networking, CNTA has a huge network, um, you know, people that work at all different companies and facilities on site. So uh, this committee, this, this professional development mentoring subcommittee, we also make an effort to set people up with mentors. So if you're interested in having a mentor or just meeting someone, maybe that's at a company you're interested in or that has a position you're interested in, you know, please let us know. And we really have a great group of people to choose from. So um, we could also potentially help connect you to someone on site and that could help you out as well. Um, so Allison did send out that poll to see who of our attendees is interested in a new role. Um, it looked like it went away too quick, but I think I saw about 40% were very interested in looking for a new role. So again, that might be an, a, a role within their company or they might be interested in, in uh, leaving their company as well. And then kind of passively interested was another 43%. So sounds like most people here today are at least open to the idea of a new opportunity. So um, please don't hesitate to raise your hand or type a question in the chat as, as we continue. Um, so now we just talked about how to find a new role and different ways to network and you know how to be proactive during a time where we're all kind of at home as opposed to in in-person in networking events or conferences. So we're now going to transition into, um, Jen and I are both going to speak to our experience in transitioning roles during this time. So it sounds like Jen and I both started our new jobs in September. Um, so as I mentioned previously, I was with SRNS. I was a shift technical engineer in H Canyon, and I'm now uh, qualifying as a shift technical engineer in the salt waste processing facility with Parsons. So a couple of things that I came up with. Um, the first one is to discuss onboarding expectations um, and 30-day expectations with your new manager. So for me personally, um, as a shift technical engineer, I had not done the work from home thing until September. And currently I'm working through my training material. So I'm usually at home doing self-study. I don't really see my manager. Um, once in a while, we might happen to cross paths at the office if we're both there grabbing something. Um, but for me, that's been really important. Um, fortunately, because I'm trained, doing so much training, I do have kind of a prescribed list of kind of things I can be working on. Um, but one thing that was good was to talk about, hey, you know, I'm not really going to be seeing you. What kind of updates do you want? How often do you want me to check in with you? You know, do you want to email every week or a phone call or how do you, how do you want us to communicate? Um, so that's been helpful. Um, also, setting shorter term goals. So I know everyone talks about setting goals anyways when you start a new job. But for me, again, kind of just being at home at my kitchen table, um, it was pretty easy to, to feel kind of unmotivated or unstimulated. 
So one thing I did is I actually just log all my activities every day. So I have a spreadsheet just with the date and a couple notes on what I did. And also I have um, that same spreadsheet kind of my goals for the day or for the week. So that, to me, that just kind of helps me kind of hold myself accountable. Um, so that's something that's worked for me. Obviously, these are all just personal to my experience. So um, they're not going to work for everyone or be interesting to everyone. Um, and then the other two I came up with were um, I was able to connect to people who are either qualified in my position right now or have been. And so that's been nice just to, my manager has introduced me to those people. Um, and so I have kind of a group of people I can reach out to when I have questions or maybe if I'm, you know, ask them if they can walk something down with me or something like that. So that's been also, also really good. And then the last, lastly, um, uh, I was able to meet one new person who actually started um, shortly before me during the pandemic. So, you know, again, I don't really see this person, but, um, you know, we exchange Skype messages here and there. And it's nice to have someone that I can ask just really basic questions. Like, for example, my first week, instead of bothering my manager, I was able to ask this person, you know, hey, I can't figure out how to submit my timesheet. You know, help, can you help me out? So that's also been good just because being at home kind of isolated, haven't really felt part of the team yet because I just haven't had the opportunity to meet a lot of people. So um, th those are kind of my four things. Jen, I'll hand it over to you to talk about your transition. Okay, oh, and I'll kind of wait. Another poll. Hopefully, you didn't miss it. Okay, gotcha. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, real quick, the new poll says: so we asked if you're in, if you are interested in looking for a new role, um, what type are you looking for? Fifty percent of people said a new external. Twenty five percent said they were open to an internal or external job move, and then twenty five percent are not looking for a new position currently. So, thanks for participating in that. All right, cool. So um, my situation when I, I will, I will talk from an applicant standpoint. Um, I would suggest if anyone is looking for a new role internally or externally to reach out to the HR personnel because they can help you with your resume writing. Because I, you know, we have seen situations where um, the resume is just not right and it gets thrown out before it even gets to the manager's eyes. So I would suggest you reach out to an HR or someone who is an expert in resume writing. I think that was one of the things that kind of helped me with my, um, with my posting and, and um, applying for an internal position. Another thing is when I got hired on, well, throughout the pandemic, I was, I applied for the job like in February. So I can see how much anxiety is in that when you apply for a job and then the world stops and you just don't know where you are in the application process. Um, you can't really get in touch with the hiring managers. You know, it's just a lot of unknowns. So um, that part was a little bit stressful. And then we went to a couple months past and then I got a, an email and got contacted in June and I accepted the position in uh, July. So it was a couple of months. So, uh, you know, when you're going through that process, whether you're an internal or external um, applicant, you just got to keep your, your mind grounded and not think so deeply into it because of the state of what we're in right now. So things are different. Things are going to always be different from here on out. So um, the whole process of applying for a job and getting an interview and getting accepted and all that kind of stuff is, is different now. So if you have anxiety about that whole process and wondering why is it taking so long, just be patient um, because they have to get acclimated to the changes as well. And everything just doesn't move as fast anymore. Um, the other thing, as far as when I got into the new job, Fortunately, my manager was on top of things like she, like a manager is supposed to be. So I didn't actually have a whole lot of questions to ask her because she had everything lined up um, from the day that I accepted a position. She had, she sent me emails, she stayed in contact with me. So if you are in a situation where you're not getting that, yes, you need to reach out to your manager and, and, request information on what the next steps are and what they expect of you. Um, she let me know as far as our weekly um, 
timesheets, how we're supposed to do that. We are supposed to send in our information about, you know, the roles that we've done for the day or for the weekend so we can stay on top of our activities, um, not activities, our responsibilities. Um, the other thing, I'm sorry if y'all hear my dog barking. Um, I got some notes written down. As far as your short-term and long-term goals, I would say don't go so fast. Get your short-term goals is to pretty much get the understanding of what you're doing of your new job and get an understanding of what is expected of you. And then at a certain point after about a month or two, I say a month, you need to start speaking to your manager and seeing where they want to see you go in your career, where they want to see you go in your position and what um, potential that they see in you from the month that, or the two months that you've been in the, um, in the position. So um, don't go so hard when you first get in there, getting all your goals down because you don't know what's expected of you yet. So just kind of get your feet wet, get in the groove and then go to your manager and say, okay, I got my feet wet. This is what I'm seeing. And this is what I think I want. This is where I think I want to go. Can you give me some guidance and some advice so you can just better prepare yourself and, and for better um, professional development and, and getting in with the group and all that good stuff. Um, and I said something about the daily logs, making sure you keep your daily logs um, of all the activities that you're learning. Because when you get in, because for me, I'm starting a brand new position, a brand new job, a brand new field that I've never been in before. And for me, writing down all the new activity, all the new things that I'm learning will help me when we go through the annual review, annual review process. Excuse me. Jesus. The annual review process. And that will help me to determine where, where my strong points are and where my weak points are. And my manager can help me get, um, get a handle on my weak points and put me in connections with people that can help me with my weak points and also put me in connections with people that can strengthen my strong points. So um, that's all I have, if y'all have any Perfect. questions. Thanks, Jen. Let's see, I'm not seeing any questions pop up yet, so we'll go ahead and move on to Marissa, and then we can just do a Q&A for anything you guys have on your mind. Sweet, so I guess I'm providing some of the manager perspective on all of this. Um, during done everything from interview. Um, I've done participated in a lot of interviews, a lot of video teleconferences. Um, the big thing with that, I totally agree with um, what Chris said of, um, you know, test it out, make sure you're comfortable with the format, make sure you know your connection works well. Um, you know, there's always going to be something that comes up with technology and things, but do what you can to make sure that you um, are comfortable with the software and know it. I know through SRNS, SRNL, we offer um, test capabilities to say, hey, if you want to test your connection, think, see things work. Um, and it, people really take advantage of that, which is interesting. Um, just, you know, try to do your best to make sure that you're on time, you're ready to go. Um, still dressing up. I make notes of everybody that, you know, wears a tie if they're a guy or, you know, you can tell that they dress nice now least from what you can see in the screen, you know, it works. Um, so just still treat it as you would any in-person interview um, and be professional, be prepared. Um, it's the same thing, just treat it as if you were in the same room with everybody. Um, for getting started and actually onboarding, um, I've had two, two people um, onboard um, during this time pretty recently. Um, I actually just had one person start on November 30th. Um, and What's really interesting about that one is that I have not yet met him in person. Um, we actually traveled um, over Thanksgiving, so I'm doing my due diligence staying at home, um, but he's at the site getting started. So it's that extra effort of how do you communicate with somebody like that and get them on board. Um, so that's really where I think what Jen and Sunny really said about getting a peer. Um, that's something that we do at SRNL. Um, we get them a peer to um, help out with the onboarding, provide a different perspective, be somebody else they can go to and start to get to know people. Um, but asking questions is huge because um, 
I'm sure I know I'm swamped with all the work that I have to do normally, plus having to onboard somebody else. So if you ask questions um, and say, hey, what about this? Hey, I'd, um, that's super helpful because then I can be like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot to, to tell you that or I just assumed it was something that you learned already, you know, um, and no question is too dumb for anything, especially when you're getting on board. I know, um, you know, between what SRNS does, for example, like with Sunny, um, how timekeeping is done between SRNS and between Parsons, because my husband works for Parsons. And it's, it's kind of annoying on the Parsons side as far as what I've been able to tell, but it's something that you got to learn. And if you don't ask the question, you have to, you know, you're not going to know. So don't feel like it's dumb for anything. Um, really um, using all avenues of communication that's open to you during this time. Um, I know, you know, I'm staying home right now. We're trying to be encouraged, you know, to stay home as much as possible right now. Um, and so you can't just, people just can't walk into my office anymore. So when I tell my, my group to, you know, I'm at home, call, text, email, all the above is available to communicate with me and I expect people to use it. And I'll use it on the same time too, because even now more than ever, it's really important to communicate and keep all those avenues open. Um, and if you don't hear back from somebody, ask them again. Um, there's been a couple of times where I, I have a terrible personal habit of reading an email and then responding in my head and I don't actually respond. Um, so um, I have a couple people go, hey, I didn't hear from you over the past day or two. Can, what do you think of this? Like, oh, crap, I forgot, you know? And so don't, don't be afraid to be persistent and to ask the question, you know, give them a day or two if you haven't heard anything back. If it's important, call them, you know, treat it as if you were just going to be walking into their office your, for your manager or something and they're there. Try to try to be as um, consistent with that as possible. Um, if you feel like um, for onboarding, I try to have notes in my computer to, um, to remind me to talk to people or to follow up on things so that I can do that and have that consistency. Um, I've kept group meetings on a regular basis with my team, just as I would um, if we were meeting in person through that, just to keep those lines of communication open. Um, for example, this morning I had my group meeting and there wasn't that much to update them on, but I still wanted to do it. So we just did some icebreakers, which everybody kind of rolls their eyes, but they're actually, you know, you gotta talk to people now. It's it's really kind of isolating for some people. Like and like Sunny was saying, you know, if you're just kind of stuck at home and reading a procedure, it gets a little it's a little dull after a while. So you gotta have that that communication. So um, really for the onboarding, I try to make those set notes of saying, okay, we're gonna talk about this on this day. You know, let me know if you have any other questions. You know, come with a list of questions pre prepared, um, and then we'll follow up. And then we'll do the same thing again of, hey, we'll talk on this time at this day and follow up and keep them going and try to keep introducing more things as people are onboarding. But um, I really think it takes an extra effort on both the manager and the new hire to really make that extra effort to, to keep things moving forward and keep those lines of communication because it is easy to be stuck either at home or in your office, you know, either way and being able to socialize a lot and see a lot of other people. So um, those are kind of, um, and I think the one last thing would be um, really be flexible with things too. You know, if something doesn't happen right then and there, try to try to give some people some grace and some extra room and, um, you know, and then just still follow up with that extra question and, and kind of be like, you know, and, and try to help figure things out because we're all in a state of turmoil right now <laughs> overall, but um, really kind of being proactive. And I totally agree with everything that Jen said about you know, tracking activities um, and what Sunny and them said about, um, you know, expectations, get those laid out in first, you know, that's a really great way. And, and tracking what you've done over the year will really help you during the time where you have to do your performance reviews and things. So that's. Thank you, Marissa. Um, does anybody have any questions for any of the panelists? And, okay, I'll throw one out there just to kind of get things started. So um, Chris and Marissa, you might be able to speak to this or Jen or anyone, but um, are your, so I know most of you guys are in, you know, SRNL, SRNS. So are your companies hiring right now? Because I know I've heard had a lot of people say, and eh, nobody's hiring right now because of course there are certain industries and companies that have had to furlough people or lay people off. So, you know, is that something that should, that people at SRS should be concerned about right now? Uh, right now, I mean, the lab, we're very specific in what we're looking for. 
but we, we have about, uh, I think there's seven open requisitions right now. I think that constitutes uh, looking for about 12 people right now. And it pretty, stays pretty constant. I'd say at any given time, we have, you know, anywhere from five to seven requisitions open. And it varies from one position to just a couple. And then every now and then, I think we have one out there right now that's looking for five people in the same category. I'd, I'd I don't have it off the top of my head what the titles are, but but yeah, we we, we have a pretty aggressive uh, schedule this year. We we're trying to hire about 200 new people, so okay, well, yeah, it's uh you know we're 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 looking pretty hard. Nice, yeah, and I know retirement hasn't necessarily slowed down at the site, so you know there still still seems to be you know spots that continue to open up. So that's good. We're, we're very lucky on site. Yeah, and Marissa, I know you said you've been interviewing, so I assume you've been part of that um, process too. I participated in two interviews today, actually, and last night I wrote up a requisition, two requisitions for Chris, you'll see that soon. Oh, you just cut out. You said two requisitions for... Yep, two requisitions, so looking for some new people in my group um, for their all sk uh, varying skill levels, so yep. Good. Yeah, and I know I've, I've seen a couple different people kind of on my LinkedIn network outside of site, um, kind of in the same engineering field, start new jobs and stuff. So again, kind of like what Chris said, don't use it as an excuse to, you know, put your career or job on hold if, if you're um, ready to make a change. Okay, attendees, let's see, handful of you guys there. Any questions? Um, any you guys are need, you know, have like specific questions, I guess, for your situation. And I know many of you said you're very interested in switching positions. So um, this is a pretty small group if you have any kind of more specific questions. Um, and again, I really want to encourage you if there is something specific you're looking for to reach out to me either directly if you have my email or through Allison at the CNTA BellSouth.net email to um, help us connect you with someone who uh, may be able to help you out or give you some advice. Oh, we got a hand raise. Okay, let's see. Nico, I'm gonna see if I can unmute you. I don't think I'm doing it. Allison, I need help. Oh, here we go, hold on, Nico. Nope, I don't see how to do it. Allison, can you help me out? Oh, oh looks like he's unmuted. Okay, we can hear you, sorry about that. Um, yeah, when I could relate to what uh, Chris was talking about earlier, um, browsing, internal postings, and things like that, I, I'm at the point where I'm open to new opportunities right now, um, just being five years into my career, and I, keep, I tend to keep an eye out for the internal postings. I just have a quick question. I've noticed recently, I don't know if this is a new policy or whatnot, but it seems that a lot of the requirements in some of the SRNS internal postings have um, become more broad um, in terms of um, experience requirements. And is that an intentional effort to try to, I guess, get more people to apply to some of these roles that require a little bit more experience and allowing more flexibility in applicants. Um, I don't know if you have noticed that at all, Chris or Marissa. Yeah, there is an, there was a concerted effort to, um, to eliminate the uh, experience requirements so that we would not uh, remove somebody that might have a certain level of experience. You know, it, it's interesting to note that there's a lot of times when you have someone that comes in and, you know, after just a couple of years, they're running circles around somebody that's, you know, been there five or 10 years. And, and there are up and comers that, that do that very well and they catch on very quickly and they, they rise above pretty quickly. So you have your high potential employees that uh, you want to reward for being able to, uh, for, for doing a good job and starting out. So the, I think this gave the site, um, you know, I wasn't in the decision-making process for that. So I'm not exactly um, sure if, if I'm hitting it on the nose or not, but 
and, and just talking with some of the folks that uh, why the, the, the removal of experience requirements went, came about is, is it's pretty much to allow, uh, you know, people that, that have the skill sets to do uh, jobs that people that have been here longer to do, but they do it better or faster or whatever. So, and we didn't want to eliminate, I don't think, the, the ability to allow that person to apply for that job and, and, and not be considered for it. Because quite frankly, you know, EEO requirements mm -hmm. require that you, you know, treat everybody the same and, and, and try to make sure that you give everybody a fair shot at getting the job. So uh, we feel like that this does that better. And, um, and I, you know, if, if I was on the panel that was making that decision to do that, that would, that would be how I would, um, you know, kind of identify with it and, and why it's being done. It gives more people an opportunity to apply and be, be considered for an op, uh, the job. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for asking that. Nico, do you have any follow-up questions? Or did I cover it? Oh, of course, he's on. he's on mute. So, oh, do you have any other follow-up questions, or did that answer it? Um, thank you. That that answered my question. I do have a follow-up question though for Marissa. Um, Chris is familiar with my group and we're, we work closely together. Um, and you mentioned communication is really important right now, especially um, not being able to see each other. And I'm used to being able to walk next door into my manager's office or my coworker's office and ask quick questions. And I have a little bit of trouble um, initiating that initial communication now from home, whether it's calling people because it seems like a lot of people are a little bit more busy now with meetings and trying to find people's schedules. How, is there a way like that you could kind of advise to better foster communication within like a group that might not have the best open communication like you mentioned um, with your group? Like how do you, at, from, in my position, like how could I go about trying to get people more involved on a normal basis? Um, so I, I think kind of two ways. Um, so like the example that I gave where I say, hey, I'm home or I'm somewhere or I'll tell my group, you know, I had to run to or text me, you know, I mean that. I'm not just saying it. So if somebody puts it out there for you, use that follow up on it. You know, if somebody says, Take hey, you text, follow up on it. Um, at the same time, ask somebody, say, um, hey, John, is there, you know, how's the best way to get a hold of you while you're at home? You know, should I, you know, should I send you a text? Can I call you? Same thing for your group members. Um, if you're working with a group of people, maybe um, send out a, a text at the beginning or an email and say, hey, um, I know we're all working from home right now. What's your preferred method of communication? Um, you know, is it is it Teams? Is it the text, you know, what's ask people and then follow up on it. You know, if, if people are going to put it out there, follow up and, um, but don't be afraid to ask, just straight up ask them too. you know, just pretty much what you just asked us, like, Hey, we're all at home. What's the best way to go about getting in contact with you? The fear of the unknown is one of the worst fears that exists. And you got to put yourself out there and, and take a shot at it, Nico. I mean, if, if you're not comfortable with it, the more you do it, the more you're going to be comfortable with it. So it will get better. And uh, if you need to know an answer, uh, I like to pick up the phone and, and call. Um, teams and all that stuff is great. Uh, I think that's, uh, if you got a quick question and a quick answer, that's a good way to do it. it saves on your, cut down on your emails and everything else. But quite frankly, uh, you can't, you can't, there's no emotion in a team's message. There's no emotion in an email, um, you know, unless you do it in all caps and we all know what that means, right? So, um, but just, you know, it's just to pick up the phone and, and have a conversation. That's the best way to, to cut to the chase. That would be my uh, offer there. Yeah, 
definitely, Nico, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I mean, I'm an outgoing person, but starting at a new job when maybe you've met people once or never at all in person, it's been a little bit intimidating at, time to, at times to reach out. So my strategy has just been either sending an email or Skype message um, when I have a question. And again, nothing, nothing has been very urgent on my part because I'm training, so I can always, you know, read other materials. So I've just been shooting people message and saying like, Hey, when you have a couple minutes, can you give me a call, you know, just to talk about this or answer this question? And again, because I always feel like their stuff is kind of more important than what I'm doing. So um, if it, that's kind of what I've been doing. You just said, hey, whenever you have time, here's my phone number. Give me a call like sometime today. Yeah, I've done similar. Like just this morning, Nico, I sent Chrissy a text. I said, you know, and she's like, no, she's like, unless it's urgent. No, but I just even just sending an email saying, Hey, are you free at this time? Or hopefully most people's calendars. But, um, and like another example, I had a, a thing with that Chris helped me out with earlier. Um, and I was about to send him an email, but I was like, you know what? I want to, I want an answer now. I want to know what's going on. So I just picked up the phone and called him, even though it was, um, I think it was like five 30 or something at night, but I was like, Hey, I'm just going to call him and, and see if he can help me out, you know? So, um, it's harder for sure when you don't know somebody as well. Um, but, I would just do that of saying, hey, when's a good time? Or just ask how they prefer to be contacted and, and reach out. Sounds good. Any other questions? Either Nico or um, anyone else that wants to send a chat or raise their hand to talk to us? Okay, I'll ask them one question. Your team meetings you mentioned, maybe that's once a week or pretty often, but how often do you check in with people one-on-one? -on -one? Or do they, or do you usually expect them to reach out to you? Sure, who you were talking to, you cut out quite a while. Quite oh, a oh, I did, sorry. I'll repeat that. Um, this question was for, for Marissa or Chris. I don't know if you... Um, have any direct reports, but how often are you checking in with people one on one? Okay. Did that, so you, you, know? you, you cut out again, but I think I know what you, you asked. You're asking how long we connect with our direct reports. Uh, yeah, when, how often? When we first started the pandemic uh, and we started teleworking, I was having a, a conversation every afternoon at three o'clock with my staff. Um, however, as we went along, the, the, it, it got kind of mundane and, and there wasn't a lot to talk about because we generally interact pretty regularly during the day anyway. So, uh, so I cut that back to two days a week and, but I, I make sure if I don't interact with somebody for at least half a day, I'm getting on the phone with them just to check in because there's been email traffic and whatnot. So there's always something you can talk to them about, but I pretty much, you know, have two calls a week. Okay. And they're, they're, they're not real long, 15, 20 minutes, but, but it, it, it gets the job done. Yeah. And they have to listen to me. I annoy them a little bit, so that's good. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, um, you guys are not going to prolong this any longer, but I'll give you about another 60 seconds. If there's any burning questions, please throw them in the chat, in the chat or raise your hand. Okay, well, as we wrap up, I just wanna thank the panelists. Um, and again, if there are any follow-up questions or if you're interested in connecting with a mentor or you know someone who's you know in a field you're interested in pursuing, uh, please reach out to the CNTA email.